um, let's see. So here regrowth is it's a strategy, right? And uh, basically what you need to do is that you need to uh, break it down the problem and find out what is actually happening there. And uh, you should not address it all at once, but uh, break it down in smaller parts and address one by one before uh, kind of not addressing all at the same time, but address each part. Like for example, if you do have a uh, scalp inflammation, address it first. If you do have a DHT problem, address it uh, as next and so on. Right? Don't uh, rush uh, all at the same time. Uh, me, when I started to uh, fix my hair loss issue, uh, I was losing my hair since I was 18 years old. And this is my situation back in 2008. Um, and uh, you can see how fridge my hair were looking, how thin, uh, and how, how few are of them actually were there on my skull. Uh, but then, of course, I was able to recover from it, and uh, I got uh, very awesome results uh, afterwards. And uh, like, uh, like after I started with Spinal Street, I was able to get uh, this regrow. At the time, I also was having scalp inflammation and other issues on my scalp. So I was having those ups and downs all the time. I would get some results and then the hair would fall out again. Uh, but uh, it was definitely a big improvement compared to where my hair was at the worst. Uh, at the worst, it was looking like this. Uh, but I was able to recover to this stage here. And uh, of course, when I started to do uh, micro needling and uh, minoxidil, I was able to get this kind of result. And uh, here again, uh, this is my year in 2012. I was very happy with results so far, uh, but it was not perfect, right? This is kind of my thing. Uh, it was okay. Let's see. Let's move this a little. It was not perfect uh, compared to when my hair got afterwards. And uh, basically, uh, my problem was scalp inflammation. And scalp inflammation needs to be taken seriously because each time it comes back, it becomes harder and harder to solve it. And uh, I remember when I first started to solve it, it was quite easy. I could use uh, hydrocortisone creams and uh, nitrile shampoo, and it basically went away. But the second time I got it, I needed to use stronger steroid creams. I ended up using nitrile 2% and uh, several other uh, steroids, uh, steroid shampoos. So uh, every time inflammation gets back, uh, it becomes harder to solve it. Right? So you, what you need to do is basically to solve, is to solve it once and for all to make sure that it doesn't come back uh, again. So. And the first thing I noticed when I started to block DHT uh, was that my hair had become less oily. Like this part of here, I was, it was always very oily when I was having uh, DHT issue in my skull. I remember it would always be uh, like there would be a lot of acne outbreaks on my skull, on my head, and there also would be a lot of oilness. For example, if I I did wash my forehead, uh, like five, 10 minutes after, it become oily again. Uh, but when I started with Pinocity uh, in my case, to block DHT, that oilness went away, and uh, it basically got kind of to normal levels. That was kind of first thing I noticed when I started with Pinocity. And uh, you also can see basically here that how, how bad my situation was in 2008. Uh, regarding here uh, on my temples and the quality of the hair itself was also very bad in very bad shape so and uh, this is me in 2013 i have shown this picture before but just to kind of refresh for you guys is that uh, i had several issues on my scalp going on on a lot of time and uh, you can see that uh, there was uh, like a build-ups there were oilness there were inflammatory hair follicles uh, there was much sebum uh, a lot of things were running on my skull, and that's why my results were also not as good as it should be. Right? And of course, luckily I didn't add uh, minoxidil or derma roller or microneedling device at that time, because it would make those things much worse. Right? So you need to uh, address and solve any problems in your skull before you actually can do uh, any growth stimulation. Uh, and this is my scalp uh, nowadays. You can see how nicely it looks compared to compared to this stage here. Right? And uh, here is basically, I want to kind of show you a uh, difference between uh, different hair loss causes, right? For example, if one is having DHT problem, uh, then, then it's basically, it's kind of, it, it is kind of controllable hair loss, right? It, it happens uh, over time and the hair are falling out, right? But if one is having inflammation at the hair loss, it becomes much, uh, hair fall out much faster, much uh, higher speed. And uh, 
allergy also is something that I'm going to talk in this video. And it also is something that makes here fall out. Uh, and often when it happens in combination with all, all those factors at the same time, uh, it suddenly becomes a huge issue, right? So uh, that's why I always uh, show an importance of addressing each one of those problems at the right times, because if they are like, if one is just focusing on DHT and not addressing all other ones, uh, basically they still keep causing hair loss issues and uh, one are not able to get awesome results as one should be able to get if one is addressing all of them. Uh, and I was having all of them. Basically, I was having a DHT problem in the beginning uh, when I started to lose my hearing when I was 18. But then I also got scalp inflammation. I also got uh, stress issues. And I also got allergy uh, that also was causing problems. I remember when I was having, for example, allergy from diet, I would have a tension in my scalp, it would itch, uh, all those things. So uh, it is important to address all of them. Uh, and basically to get regrow, you need to set up right conditions, initial conditions right from the beginning. Right? And uh, by that, I mean that you need to kind of uh, add all the factors that can make your hair strong before you start to stimulate hair regrow. Hair regrow. You need to make sure that you have removed the inflammation. You need to make sure that you have removed any factors that cause allergies, all those things right? before you start uh, to stimulate hair regrow. Because uh, if you do have some things going on, like uh, DHT is out of control, uh, inflammation is there, allergies is there, then it will be much harder to get results and it will take much longer. Right? So if you do have everything perfect from the beginning, then it, getting results is much easier. So. Uh, and as I said before, you need, if you want to kind of address this problem and solve it, you need to break it down in smaller parts and address each part one by one. And you have to remove uh, and address anything that causes inflammation, allergy, or DHT spikes. And uh, basically, what I want to show you as an example is for you guys who do use hat, uh, like, and uh, some, in some cases, hat can cause allergies as well, right? because it's made from different materials. There's like a polyester, there is a cotton part, that can be issue because it can cause allergic dermatitis or contact dermatitis to the scalp. and. Uh, like normally if scalp is not implemented it is okay to use it but if scalp gets implemented it can cause issues and uh, lead to uh, more inflammation so you need to kind of be careful and you understand that uh, there are different parts of this hat and uh, some of them like polyester can actually cause issues for us uh, on our scalp if, especially if there's inflammation or one has allergic reaction to polysters and uh, for you guys who want to join our video program, you can schedule a call below the studio. Well, that's the uh, talk. See, I can help you with your hair loss problem. Uh, my program is six months and it's basically designed to address all the online issues that can cause hair loss uh, and uh, solve them. Uh, and I have been able to solve it myself and uh, been able to keep my hair for, for 12, 12 years, 13 years now. So it is something that works. It is something that is a uh, long term solution. And uh, if you do need help with hair loss, uh, schedule follow below the studio. Let's see how I can help you. Um, here is basically a schedule link for you guys who want to have a call with me. And here are some of the results for the guys in my program. And uh, this guy here, I'm going to do a uh, interview at the end of uh, September. We are still planning about it. So if you want to have a call, schedule follow below the studio and uh, I will check out questions uh, now basically. About age uh, uh, finasteride, uh, like uh, I started uh, with finasteride when I was uh, uh, when I was around 24 I think, it was back in 2008 uh, and uh, for me basically finasteride was uh, like, uh, let's see I can uh, check out this again. Uh, so uh, I started uh, with finasteride when I was 24, and uh, I would say it's uh, it's not about age, right? Or uh, it doesn't cause any issues. Uh, then uh, finasteride is okay to start. Uh, basically, when you start to notice you are having hair loss, right? uh, this is kind of my, my take on it. So, uh, basically, start it as soon as possible because if it's just DHT that is causing hair loss issue, then uh, addressing it as fast as possible is the best option. So. Uh, question about uh, finasteride and how much to take. Uh, 
Yes, uh, like I do with microdosing myself, and I've been doing uh, microdosing since uh, beginning basically, and uh, 0.5. Uh, yeah, it is a kind of safe range to take it. Uh, like there are done studies that shows that even as low as uh, 0.25 is effective. And uh, some guys in my program also are taking 0.25. Uh, I personally take 0.5. It's something that you will need to take uh, for a long time, right? long DHT. So uh, basically, my suggestion would be to test out different amounts and see which one uh, kind of works best for you and don't uh, have any issues of taking. So uh, that would be my take on it. Uh, like a question about minoxidil, uh, I will just stick to normal minoxidil. I don't, don't overcomplicate it with uh, other stuff. Uh, minoxidil do work. Uh, it just basically, if you do have scalp inflammation or you do have uh, some uh, online conditions that this uh, needs to be so Like for example, minoxidil um, won't be as effective if you don't block DHT one way or other. Right? You always need to block of DHT, always need to make sure that all online conditions are solved before you actually do, uh, do use it. So um, uh, I would just stick to uh, like a simple minoxidil 5% and uh, not try to find any other solution regarding it. Yes. Okay, guys, everyone for the day. Thanks for attending and uh, see you next time. Cheers.